So give a round of applause for Matt Ingebrigtsen, Jake Wiseman, and Pat Bishop. Hey, hey, hey. hey guys. Seat. Hello. Thanks for having us. Welcome to Google. Uh, so we just got the opportunity to check out episode four of Corporate. What'd you guys yeah. think? Hilarious. <laughs> Thanks. Um, so why don't we kick it off? You guys can just talk a little bit about the show and your inspirations and how you sort of came up with a very unique concept for an office-based show. Yeah. Well, first of all, I'm excited to be at Google. I owe you guys my life. If you guys went away, <laughs> things would crumble so quickly. I'm desperate for you. Thank you so much. Um, well, I mean, I, I don't share those sentiments. Yeah. Um, I'm just kidding, I do. Thanks for everything. Um, I think, first of all, obviously, it's a darker look at um, office life, which we, but it's frustrating when people call it dark because it's also just, I think, more honest. Um, you guys have a lot of smiles on your face, which we don't often see. Uh, you guys' snack room is incredible, yeah, by the I way. I stole so much food from you guys. <laughs> Thank yeah. you for that as well. Yeah, I yeah. think that we're, we were trying to make, trying to do a few things. One of the first things we wanted to do was create a show about working that is a little more honest than other shows. And when The Office came out, which I think is a great show, the American version, it was considered like dark, but it's so goofy and so <laughs> silly and has a really goofy boss. And it's actually just about how um, people get along at a company and that the, the real wonderful part of work is your coworkers. Um, and I think we're, our point is everyone's sad, there's no God, uh, <laughs> and you're going to die screaming into the void. And so you think about that when you're at work, yeah. wondering where your life went wrong. And that was one of the first things we wanted to do was portray office life, how most people feel about it. Yeah. Um, and yeah, some of the inspirations came from day jobs I had working at large corporations that uh, I dreaded going into work every day. I typically left on Friday not excited about the weekend, but just wanting to kill myself that I was going to have to come back there on Monday again. And again, maybe this doesn't apply to you guys because you work <laughs> at a wonderful company who, again, I owe my life to. But Thank you again. Overall, you're not happy. Yeah, <laughs> we know. We <laughs> see the sort of sadness in it. your eyes. You live in SF and you're open minded. You work at Google sad. and this was like a dream for you, but yeah. you come here and it, the snacks don't matter to you anymore, <laughs> yeah. which, is, which is why I sold them from you. I know yeah. you don't yeah. actually yeah. care about them. Not good yeah. And then, yeah. Uh, but yeah, the inspiration, so that's the inspiration for the show. Um, and we're fans of like, we also, I think, we're frustrated with a lot of TV comedies. I, don't, I should be talking to you, I guess. Yeah, talk to you. Oh, yeah, what are we yeah. supposed to do? <laughs> Whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> Camera's over Nothing there. Matters. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, I think frustrated with a lot of uh, TV comedies, just feeling a little lazy in terms of how they shot it and the filmmaking of it and not taking advantage of the fact that they're using cameras and can do anything they fucking want. And okay, I can. I yeah, matter. you can curse. Yeah, okay. <laughs> um, not on Google. Yeah, not on Google. <laughs> <laughs> the censor's over. <laughs> Google, um, and so we wanted to make a little more of an ambitious show for Comedy Central that felt a little darker in tone than what they typically do. Can you talk a little about like, are there any parts of the storyline that are specifically inspired by specific instances that you've had in your yeah. workplace life? The uh, a lot of them. Uh, the episode that aired uh, last night was that last night? No. no. What is today? <laughs> Saturday? Friday. 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 <laughs> Wednesday. Our show's on Wednesdays at 10 p.m. on Comedy Central. Uh, is an episode about my character taking naps in his car in the parking garage at work, which is something that I actually did and got caught doing by my boss, and it was a humiliating experience for me. And Jake's storyline is about him getting spinal fusion surgery, which you actually did yeah, get. Yeah, well, and also people that I had dated and friends of mine would check in on me when I was recovering, and I thought they cared about me, but they just wanted my pain pills. Uh, yeah. And the, it was an incredible learning experience. America is real. Yeah. Um, and, but yeah, I think what we tried to do... The truth is also that when writing the show, Beyond the Pilot, we did interview people from your company and yeah. from Amazon and other corporations, and we're like, off the record, how bad is it? Uh, and we tried to, you know, we, we had postulated theories about what it's like to work in corporations, and we had some specifics given, but mostly it was just confirmed. Mm -hmm. That there's, even in a wonderful environment like Google, there's just all this bureaucracy, this uh, necessary insanity that can't be avoided. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We tried to include as much of that as possible. Yeah. Oh, good. Good to know Google's not uh, excluded yeah. from that. Uh -huh. So, I mean, I feel like if I had watched this show, I used to work a much more corporate environment in my prior job, and I feel like if I'd watched this, I'd be very depressed because uh -huh. it doesn't seem like there's much of a way out or much hope. Is yeah. there any hope for people that work at Hampton DeVille, or? I don't think so, or I mean, like, maybe quit your job. We had, I, I, I've told this story once, but we had a, a friend of ours 
who worked in a very corporate job, watched the pilot when that was all we had made. We had just made the pilot, and she watched it. And then shortly after, went and did ayahuasca, and uh, which everyone at Google knows what ayahuasca <laughs> is, I assume. Did ayahuasca, and while she was hallucinating, had hallucinations of our show, and it like was a life-changing experience for her. And when she got back, she quit her job. So I think that's the goal of the show. It's I, I don't <laughs> is to get people to do intense hallucinogens and then abandon their life. I, I think that I don't know if there's a ton of hope in this show, but I think that there is catharsis in it, and that like we understand what you're going through. It's uh, there's a darkness to it that, that hopefully you can relate to. Um, I just don't think there's a lot of hope in life. I think you can like uh, you can be good to one another, and that's about the best you can do. But in terms of like working in this environment, it is, it yeah. typically feels a little... I mean, I feel like we, well, we work for Viacom. Yeah. And we, we managed to, like, make a show that makes fun of Viacom and yeah. other uh, things. So we, I feel like we sort of succeeded by turning the system against itself. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, we just watched that. Yeah. that yeah. There was a quote in that episode that was like, all great artists sell out, and you yes. guys work for Comedy Central uh -huh. yeah. and are doing a talk at Google. Yeah. So does that make you guys Yeah, I think yeah. We're, so, we're absolutely selling. <laughs> there's a movie, absolutely. There's yeah. a movie called SLC Punk um, that has a great line where he's like, I'm not selling out, I'm buying in. And I, I feel like in a in a world and especially a country structured uh, for corporations to win every single time, the best you can do is buy in and try to be nice to the people around you. What are you supposed to do? Even if you go live off the grid, you're doing that in reaction to a corporation. So all you can do is try to find as good a situation as possible that a corporation is letting you do. Yeah, I do think if you're in the darkest moments of your life, the show might be you might want to watch like Lord of the Rings or something that's escapist, like takes you out of it. Yeah, but Lord of the Rings, not. that movie that always yeah. lifts you up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that came to mind. I haven't seen Lord of the Rings in like 15 years. That's top of mind for me today for some reason. Um, well, oh, it wow. seems like your two main characters, Matt and Jake, uh, yeah. are pretty unaffected by the corporate brainwash. Yeah. Why are they the only two? Or do you think that other characters will come out as cynical? As I, yeah. um, I think unaffected maybe like how our characters seem but i think both of the characters lives are completely in reaction to corporations like my character i don't know if you guys have seen the pilot or not but my character used to be in a punk band um and really failed at that uh and uh he wanted to be an artist he also was a street artist he tried to express himself artistically failed at that and realized that oh the world's a capitalist nightmare so i have to buy in so i'm still structuring my life around a corporation um i've just ex it's just basically because also i'm depressed <laughs> and so it's like okay well this is what life is i'll just live it out I think too that we we tried to explore build into the show the idea that it's no character's ne like fault necessarily that they're behaving badly to some extent it's like the fact that they're a part of this larger corporation that's doing very bad things and so like the the bosses that we have in the show are both essentially psychopaths who behave like maniacs towards us but I think that they're just further along down this path than we are and have been corrupted a little more deeply than we have so they were once you. Um, yeah, in, yeah. In, episode, in the season finale, you'll see, I'm not going to say what happens, but you'll see them in our position, like a flashback yeah. to them in our position. So they, they used to be you know, excited like us, and they've been yeah. beaten down, uh -huh. and now they're rich. Yeah. So it doesn't matter anymore. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, Pat, I want to give you a chance to talk a little bit. Pat is the writer and director and editor of the show. Mm -hmm. um, so can you talk about the choices you made as a director that differentiates this either from other office comedies or your past work. There's some more obvious things. There's the darkness, like the actual darkness of the mm -hmm. shots, the music. So you just talk about some of your choices there? Yeah, I think well, an idea we had from the start was that we'd wanted to make it more cinematic. And, um, and I think most comedies are kind of brightly lit and have bright colors because it's supposed to be fun. And you're supposed to want to hang out with this group of friends. Um, but for this show, the story we wanted to tell, we needed it to be darker um, and make it feel a little oppressive um, to be there. So yeah, we, we borrowed from like people like David Fincher or like kind of just more dramatic kind of sources um, and mix that in with, with the comedy and stuff. And we also got like dramatic actors like um, Lance Reddick from The Wire uh, and, uh, and Dudek who plays Kate on the show who's been in a bunch of stuff. Um, and tried to, yeah, just kind of take it more seriously in a way. Uh, and let the kind of absurd things that were happening play in contrast to that. Yeah, I think a lot of our fa this 
our favorite movies and stuff are not things that are pure comedies. They exist in a sort of like drama, but that dips into comedy world. And so we wanted to be a little more in that vein than something that takes everything extremely lightly, I think. I'm curious, what, what would those be, those uh, well, I, you know, there's a well. We love like the Coen Brothers and Paul Thomas Anderson and stuff, where it's like, re like Boogie Nights is a sprawling drama, but really funny. And yeah. the Coen Brothers movies look incredible. And then so when the jokes come out of these incredibly well lit scenes, uh, Pat has said this before. It's almost like the joke is you set up this beautiful painting and then said something stupid. Yeah. Like that's the joke <laughs> itself is the yeah, fact that you did all this work to say a yeah. dumb joke about a penis. You know yeah. what I mean? And that's like that's the joke. Um, but also. We like people like Todd Salons. Does anybody Just know people who with Todd Salons is? <laughs> <laughs> he did Welcome Google to a Dollhouse and yeah. Happiness, but just really like bleak humor. But also, and I've talked about this a bunch, but the movie Airplane is a really incredible comedy. It's very silly, but what people don't remember is it's a drama that's just taken very in a very silly way. Like Leslie Nielsen was a dramatic actor, and they picked him to do extremely dumb jokes. But if you watch Airplane, it's a, a tense drama about yeah. something happening in an airplane, yeah. and the dumbest stuff is happening. I think we're more in that vein. We're yeah. getting Lance Reddick, who could read the phone book and you'd be engrossed, saying yeah. incredibly okay. dumb things. Yeah. And uh, that, to us, is just the best comedy. Yeah. <laughs> and it's also just, we're trying to make a satire, and so it has to look good, otherwise you don't think we're talking about anything. Yeah. What's it like to, to work with Lance or Aparna and the other? Uh, Lance is incredible. He's he's very intimidating. He's like he made me feel ashamed of my acting abilities. <laughs> uh, the, he's like a meticulously prepared, perfect actor, and uh, off screen is like the sweetest guy who's a great listener and super politically minded. He's like amazing, A plus. And Aparna is like a unicorn genius, like brain exploding, wonderful person who we. Um, we're lucky to work with because she just brings, she adds like so many other layers to the character that we're not necessarily even on the page. I think one thing that we're good at is, and this is an obvious thing, you're told a lot, I think in business, but then when you do it, you realize how important it is. You just pick people better than you. And yeah. you look, and you get the credit for it. So we just like <laughs> cast people uh, that are way smarter, way funnier, way more talented. And then you know, since we wrote it, then everyone's like, "Wow, you did it!" But they're the they're the best people. Yeah, give them we the just credit. cast them. Yeah. We just cast well. <laughs> Everyone we cast was like a friend or someone we really admired. And um, you know, we wrote Baron Vaughn into the show. He wasn't in that episode, but he's he's a genius. We wrote for specific people, and we we cast it extremely well. And that just does so much of the work. Yeah. I feel like every episode has like this very stark, if not written out on a bumper sticker, reminder that we're all gonna die. Uh -huh. <laughs> In case you didn't know. Yeah. Um, so uh -huh. why why that message? Why especially why on did, Comedy Central? Why did we do this? Yeah, do you yeah. think people we are expecting have? to turn Comedy Central on and be like, oh, I'm gonna die? <laughs> well, we did. We have gotten that question a little bit of like, why did you do this? Or like, why did you make a show with this type of messaging? For me, it was. I, I found it extremely. I have found it extremely helpful in my life uh, to get that messaging drilled into my head, which is like, you're gonna die, but that's that's fine. We're all gonna die. That's okay. It's very comforting to me. I, I'm sure it isn't for everybody. Who but here like, is thinking about dying right now? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. None of you. Nobody. I don't believe wow. any of you. Google. I'm thinking about dying right now. On the plane here, yeah. just a few hours ago, Matt and I were having a conversation. It's like, yeah. if the plane crashed right now, it'd be fine. Yeah. You know, because <laughs> if you die, yeah. then there's no more pain. If you live, yeah. we get to do cool stuff. But if you die, it's over. It's not that big a deal. And I think the craziest thing about life is that yeah. you're going to die. It's like, yeah. it's the best yeah. joke possible. It's structured as a joke. Yeah. It's like, you do all this stuff. Create a family, build a career. Yeah. Oh man, get mad at people who yeah. break up with you. Yeah. You know, uh, do amazing things, learn lessons, and then uh -huh. it's over, and it really doesn't matter. Yeah. So that's yeah. just to me uh -huh. the essence of comedy. There's a lot of like great satirists, a lot of like you know. Uh, French people who s smoke cigarettes and wrote bleak yeah. things all wrote about that. And so, yeah. I, you know, I, do, I just don't, the thing is so much comedy avoids that. It's all escapism and it's pure yeah. just mirth and it's, it's sometimes funny, but it's not based in the human truth where most of the people, being around comedians, you think they're silly, but they're really serious people yeah. and they're thinking about this stuff all the time and we just, that's what we think is funny. Yeah, I think that there's some comedies that you, it starts with like a depressed like parent or something who's like not happy with their life and whatever and then the answer for them is like go to Vegas and party <laughs> yeah. and like yeah. have a crazy weekend and yeah. then like learn yeah. but it's like that's not an answer yeah. Yeah. It's like there is no like great answer yeah, yeah. it's yeah. just sort of like I think the problem one of the problems of life is that we look at things we call certain things dark 
and that is because we're, 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 that's incorrect. Death is not dark, it's just a fact of life. You know what I mean? If th things that are dark shouldn't be called dark, they're just things that are. But we call them dark because we're afraid of them. So if you talk about death and you talk about whatever people perceive as darkness, you're deflating the balloon, you can live a better life in the meantime. If you don't take life so seriously, you can have a better time. Yeah. I think. <laughs> Should be a, a motivational speaker. Jewish man, so yeah. listen to me. Jake as a motivational speaker would be a huge mistake. It would be the you know most what? psychotic, you know what? 90, insane 99% thing. of the people would kill themselves, yeah. but the 1% would truly live. <laughs> <laughs> that's who I'm asking yeah. for. Let's hope we're all this in that 1%. very crazy talk. <laughs> yeah. um, well, we're going to take questions from you guys in a couple of minutes, uh, so start thinking about those. Uh, I did take pull another quote from one of the episodes, which is that we all want to kill ourselves, but you can't because the internet cares about you. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think that's that true? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, you're talking to a lot of the internet here. Oh, yeah, that's right. The internet. Yeah. Well, I think it's like yeah. that, that's like said to a character who is like, his job is tweeting. So I, I think like people, like people care about you. Like there are other people. And I think sometimes like even the interactions we have can be just through the internet or something that feels like superficial. Um, but I feel like even that is like positive, or you can get something out of that, or a reason yeah. to like live is to find people to connect with, either in real life in a real way or on the internet in a fake way. Yeah, the <laughs> internet kind of just like is a hyperbolic version of what's going on. Like you can live or die by it in a crazy way. Like it can turn on you, but then make you feel good. It's like it's very like a wild relationship we have with the internet and. Uh, the internet cares about you. The other thing, too, that comes in that episode is the internet cares about you right now, but tomorrow it doesn't care about you at all. <laughs> yeah. And it's forgotten you existed, and it's back to talking about Guys, Trump. I just want to say something. The show is funny. So yeah. I know that it's very it's dark. Fun. It's yeah. like darkness, but there's a lot of jokes. Yeah. So please watch it. I don't know if we're good salesmen for the show yet, but we're working on that. Whatever we need to say to get you to watch it, we'll we say are, it. If yeah. we were selling clinical depression, we would yeah. sell out. <laughs> <laughs> we're the Cutco Knife salesman, yeah. salesman of depression. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that as corporations, I feel like are shifting generally towards like very employee friendly work environments? Like we have nap rooms here at Google or yeah. Free Food, and you see a lot of companies starting to adopt that as almost like a recruitment perk. Yeah. Do you think that sort of that you, the vision of like a corporation as sort of a jail for people's freedom is going to change at all, or is well, it just a like nicer a, box to be in? That seems like an excuse to not let people go home. <laughs> yeah. If you can't afford housing in, in San Francisco, you can just stay at work. Yeah, I think, too, that the, a lot of the show comes about, like, the um, it's not the setting you're in so much, but the people around you or the structure of it, where you, you have somebody above you, a boss, who essentially owns your life while you're at work, and hopefully they're nice to you, and they're like a good person, but if they're not, they're gonna slowly degrade your sense of well-being over a period of time. Yeah, I was talking to Aparna, Aparna Cheryl, who's a genius and is on the show, and she yeah. was she talks about companies doing all these wellness things as viruses that are getting smarter. Yeah. So really, they're just trying to destroy you with a bigger smile on yeah. your face. And I don't know, yeah. I make comedy for a living. I really yeah. shouldn't be talking about any of this stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah. all... That being said, I love bean bags, and I would love to sit on. One yeah, of I mean, you guys seem to have a good yeah. situation. We're gonna steal some bean bags on the way out. Yeah, <laughs> I think they're like pumping Prozac through the vents yeah. or something. <laughs> we can hook you up when yeah. you're on your way out. Um, awesome. Well, I do want to make sure we get time for some audience questions. Does anyone have? If you don't, we're happy to just keep talking. Yeah. yeah. We, yeah. Um, do we want to do a handheld mic before? Because I know this is. Oh, that's fun. Oh yeah. You guys seem like very nice people. By the way, thanks for having us. We, yeah. I, I was again, to Google. my brother-in-law works yeah. here. I'm not going to say who he is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. They all got to leave here and go back to their desks. Yeah. Go back to their managers. Yeah. <laughs> Try to be productive now. Is it on? OK. Uh, what would you guys change about your show if you had like 10 times the budget? I think I would. Well, it would have been. It was so hard to make the show look like it did because we barely had a budget for this show yeah. compared to like. <laughs> We wanted it to feel like we wanted it to feel and look expensive, and we did not have the money to do. That. I think we yeah. would burn stuff down. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I have a boyish need for fire. Yeah. Uh, See, so yeah, I would blow up a building or something, but that's about it. I think actually, though, the restriction of a budget is good. It makes you be a little more creative. Um, I don't yeah. know. Pat yeah. is the one who really has to. We would add more protesters in that episode. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Try to make it look like the, a lot. The practical things that we couldn't do are like more locations, more extras, and uh, more shoot days so that 
even more shots could have been cool as fuck yeah. looking. I have a few questions. I'll just ask one. Where did the creation and development, when, how did that line up with the 2016 election? And do you think that the fact that like our culture, like the greed and everything is more bald-faced and the culture makes your jokes land more or less? We won. Um, oh, go ahead, sorry. And. Let me think if I have another question about that. Yeah, I'm just curious. And like for me, I saw the first two episodes. I haven't seen the third. And the fourth one, this was the darkest for me by far yeah. because of the co-optation when I heard the folk music uh -huh. on yes. the sound. That was heartbreaking. Uh -huh. You guys broke my <laughs> fucking heart. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyway, that's that's my first well, question. Well, that was, it was, there are a few things. One is that that episode was wit written way before the, is it Kylie Jenner or Kendall Jenner? Do you remember that Pepsi thing she did? Uh, yeah. She did this thing where she did like a Pepsi commercial where she was like, Pepsi was like being with the protesters. Pepsi and it solved was, the race wars, right? Yeah, Wasn't it that was what it was? one of the most insane <laughs> things. And this was written well in advance of that. We did, we wrote the whole show and, sh uh, when did the election happen? During the shooting. In November. Yeah, that's right. Oh yeah, 2016. Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> That's what elections. Oh my is god! A, it's all <laughs> such a, it's a re crazy repressed blur. traumatic. Yeah. I just don't want to think, think about it. I think that we. Um, so obviously Trump is a nightmare. Uh, there's no question about that. And what's going on right now is bringing that to the surface. Maybe a little more than if Hillary had won, but a I do, lot more. <laughs> but yeah. I don't think it would have been any more true. Uh, I think we were writing. I mean, obviously the fact that Trump won shows that neither candidate was really making America very happy. So I do think we were writing to whoever won. Um, we didn't know who, we thought that Hillary would win, so we were shocked, but I think if we wrote stuff, it would still ring true today, um, and that was our point. Our point is not to make any specific political points. It's supposed to just be about society. We're not coming, we're coming at it from more of a libertarian perspective, I think, comedy-wise, and just talking about society and corporations and their hold in society as a whole. Well, yeah, I think, yeah, exactly. I think that regardless of who had, who had gotten elected, uh, it still would have been about how corporations are dominating our lives. That was kind of what we were trying to get at versus trying to comment on, like, the political space that we're in. Although, by talking about corporations, you're doing that to some extent, no matter what. I guess my question is, Jokes land better or oh. worse, given that you know everything, all of this is like yeah. it was very hidden before, but it's really not hidden now. Yeah. I mean, maybe I it helps know. a little bit. It's hard to say. I mean, I we were we weren't. Yeah, I think Trump just <laughs> just being a psychopath and obviously like corporations getting tax breaks, like that's only going to help us because it's more distrust of corporations. But I think it's it's sad that it would be more now. People should have been more aware no matter what. Yeah, it's kind of like I think if, if Hillary had gotten elected, this would have been more subversive and like kind of like a little to the side of what felt like what was happening. Whereas now it feels like we're all in an open wound. And so it's like watching everything's burning around us. And the show is also commenting on how everything's burning around us. So. I don't know. Yeah. Can you tell us something about the whole process of pitching the show to Comedy Central? How did they yeah. react to this pitch? And it's a mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, they yeah we pitched them. We pitched it initially as a sketch show, essentially kind of like Portlandia, but inside a corporation. Um, and they wanted it more ma narrative and kind of based around Matt and Jake as kind of central characters for the audience to like hang on to. Um, and I think they were very open to. We we're very clear about the kind of dark tone and direction of it from the start, and I think they they were supportive of that and wanted something that was uh, different from Workaholics, which was the other office place comedy show they had on. So I think they were ready to take a chance on something and, and really responded to our kind of like ideas visually um, for it. And then, yeah, we had a kind of long development process as that goes, but we kind of figured out what the show should be and how to build a, a world that, um, could allow us to hit a lot of different topics and was broad enough in its concept to let us kind of talk about whatever we wanted to. Yeah. And also, one reason why we were allowed to do the dark tone is we made YouTube videos um, and sketches for years, and they're pretty dark. So, yeah. I mean, we think they're silly, but we have a general dark tone, or what is called a dark tone, and we showed that for many years on YouTube. Um, and so that allowed us to be like, we can pull this kind of thing off. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what we found typically is that P development executives who work at networks are desperate for someone to come in and know what they're talking about or have like a very specific idea. They yeah. they spend most of their time just like miserable hoping that somebody comes in with the right idea. And so if you like 
have the right idea. It it was pretty smooth getting through it, although it was a lot of work, and it's been three years since we pitched it, which is crazy to think about. In this last episode, uh, you have uh, the CEO talking about how the protesters are buying the the, the products made of oil, mm -hmm. and in your own show, which is kind of like a protest against corporations, uh, you know, you have your plug for for Chili's. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> is there any true way to, or, or in your mind, what would be a true way to stage a protest of a uh, you know of corporations, or you know, is there is there a way to do that? Well, I think that. I think so. I mean, I think it's essentially is what people have been doing, which is like the best you can do is try to get new messaging out there. And I think be aware that you can be co-opted very easily or like kind of enveloped in the capitalist system very quickly. Um, but I mean, we talked about uh, the Wall Street, what was the Wall Street protest called? Many Occupy. Years Occupy <laughs> Wall Street as like, that is sort of thought of as a, uh, my memory is just failing me. Um, <laughs> but uh, as sort of, I think, talked about kind of as a failure in a lot of ways. But we do talk about the one person. There's a lot of stuff that has become a part of the popular, like, mainstream conversation now that was resulted from that. So mm -hmm. I don't think, you know, the messaging in this episode is a little bit like it's all futile or you will be co-opted. Yeah. But I think our actual view is, is not quite that cynical or, I don't know, yeah. can I speak to that? It is tricky, but cause the media is like what you need to get your message out there too, and the media has its own sort of agenda or its own kind of sources of funding. So yeah, it is hard to like, I do think there is a sort of uh, hesitancy to like give light to people who are really saying there's something wrong with the whole system because so many people are benefiting from it. Um, yeah, I don't know what the solution is. Yeah, honestly, like, and this is maybe coming from an extremely ridiculously privileged point of view, but uh, on a personal level, it's just try to do what you want to do with your life. <laughs> like, I, like I, you know what I mean? Like, what can you really do except follow your yeah. dreams if you're able to follow your dreams? We do comedy. It's a joke. You know, mm -hmm. it's a lot of hard work, but and we work for a corporation right now, but it's still really fun, and in some way, it's a protest personally. It's like, well, I'm doing what I want to do. You know, I'm doing the best I can. I, I, I don't know if there's another answer. I do think the internet and just people's ability to get um, videos and communication out there has like led to a lot of protests and kind of issues that weren't coming up before coming up. So I do think there's positive things, and just and it can be kind of chaotic or the kind of mob mentality of the internet, but. It is, um, I think there's more of an outlet now than there used to be to shine a light on something that people don't want to be seen. Okay, so as, as, as comedians, what is your actual work schedule like? Like, when do you write? How do you write? How much time do you spend writing? Do you spend a lot of time doing work not related to the show and advancing yeah. um, your comedian careers? Yeah. This is gonna sound crazy, but what we do is we just show up on set and riff. Uh, <laughs> yeah, pretty, no, uh, we work really hard. Yeah. We work really, really hard. If you're making, are you, are you talking about comedians making this show, or just comedians in general? Oh, yeah, just just yourselves yeah. in general, like your own kind of. Yeah, uh, I feel like it's not cool experience. to admit how hard you work, but we worked really hard on this show. We worked and, like, uh, yeah, yeah, we're writing like seven days a week for many months, and you know, there's always rewriting to do. There's always punching up to do, and then we're shooting the show. I mean, that's really hard. That's yeah. a lot of hours per day, every single day, and you have to go home, memorize lines, sometimes be punching up scripts for the next day. Um, again, it took us three years to get this show on air, yeah. uh, and it probably like three and a half years from the conception of it. So I would say in order to make a TV show, if you want it to be good, it's your whole life. You're yeah. thinking about it all the time. It's like your child. Yeah, we like wrote. You just think about it constantly. Yeah. We wrote during, when we were writing it, which we wrote for 12 weeks, um, uh, we wrote from like I guess like 10 to 5 or 6, but then the three of us would always either meet up afterward or go home individually and continue doing work. So, also, this is not us complaining at all. Just it's, no, it's like just, we're it's more work. than happy to do this work. It's I feel like sometimes I'm like bitching about writing <laughs> comedy for a living, which is like an insane job. But uh, it was a lot of work. It's yeah. just it's like as much work as anything that's hard to do takes. It, it's seven days a week, and um, it takes everything you have and all of your intelligence. Yeah, and then every now and then you have to wait like four months for the network to tell you whether or not they're going to make the show. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And when, you have nothing to do except worry. Yeah, yeah. after we turned in the uh, the finished pilot that we had shot, 
they waited like three months to tell us whether or not it was going to series, and I went on a lot of long walks. I got into the band Fleet Foxes. <laughs> un <laughs> unexpectedly found myself listening to Fleet Foxes a <laughs> lot craftier. during that period. But yeah. yeah. But even if, if you're in, but also just in comedy, if you do stand up or you act or whatever, like the second you finish something, you always feel like you're behind. So yeah. then, like, you know, we had to take time off from performing because we do stand up as well. Um, to then get back to stand up and doing that every single night and writing. There's always, because it's kind of an entrepreneurial thing and because comedy is a thing that kind of doesn't need to exist in the world, you have to, you have to work so much extra hard in order to make yourself be commercially viable. So you're working almost every day of the year if you really want to make it work, I think. Yeah. Well, thank you guys so much. Hopefully we can see in the future an episode of Corporate based around Google or some sort of tech mm -hmm. yeah. influence. Uh -huh. So we'll see how that comes through. Um, yeah, so you guys should check out Corporate Wednesdays, 10 p.m. on Comedy Central or online, ComedyCentral.com or on the app. You should watch it there. And let's thank these guys for coming by today. Thank, thank you guys very much. Thank Super you. Fun. Thank you.